I want to thank Bernie for inviting me to preach at All Saints this morning. It is an honor to be among you and to share worship together in this unique but important way. May the words of my mouth and meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As Jesus was building a movement of hope, love, peace, and blessing, which had the capacity to change lives, hearts, and indeed change the world, all of which have happened in the last 2,000 years. As Jesus was preaching, people in power took notice, and they didn't like what they saw and heard. In today's gospel, one of the Sadducees, a lawyer, someone pretty entrenched in power and position, asks Jesus a question with the expectation that it will entrap him. Which commandment, the debate moderator asks, which commandment is the greatest? And Jesus responds with a sermon that has been well remembered some 2,000 years later. He says, love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Now notice what he doesn't say. He doesn't say that you should love God and your neighbor if you feel like it, or your heart is disposed to it, or that you may love God, or you might love your neighbor. He doesn't say that. He says, you shall. You shall. It's a commandment. And it takes a lot of discipline to follow it. For Jesus, loving God and loving neighbor is not negotiable. It is not a choice. It requires an act of the will. The will to be offering love, full blessing to everyone. Not just some, not just the people we like, but everyone. And oh sweet Jesus, is that hard to do. Is that hard to do, especially now, as we get ready for a divisive election? Love is powerful. It needs to be powerful. Martin Luther King captured this when he said, Power without love is reckless and abusive. Love without power is sentimental and anemic. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice and justice at its best is power correcting anything that stands against love. Today, 16 days before the election, there's not a whole lot of love being offered. Actually, it is the opposite. Hate, which lies just beneath the surface, and in more cases than we care to count. It is bubbling over on social media, on the airways, it is being threatened or being spewed out, and we may even feel it ourselves. Now, there are lots of political signs dotting neighborhood walks and, and public thoroughfares. So lost among the proliferation of political signs is a sign, a blue sign, that has long been around that says, hate has no home here. And I actually think there are fewer of them around now, not so much because the political signs have taken over, but because people are feeling honest. The signs indicate that hate is not welcomed in, but I think that people who put them out and taking them down realize that hate is already there, spurred by the forces and voices that traffic in hate, that triggers our own. And as fear and anger rise as we approach the election, fears of feelings of hate are not far behind. For the past three years, I've been involved with the national movement called Braver Angels, originally called Better Angels, drawing on the words of Lincoln's first inaugural address, calling on the better angels of our nature. That name has been taken over by, and had already been taken by another group, so we renamed ourselves Braver Angels, and we need to be braver in this time of distress and discord. It was founded four years ago in the wake of the last national election, and it sought to depolarize America and still seeks to do that by convening conversations between red and blue people, people who otherwise don't agree, 
but with equal number of red and blue people gathered by civility and mutual respect to see if there can be a common ground identified. In the past four years, there have been thousands of conversations held all across the country, and common ground has been found because alliances are appearing with red and blue people saying, well, we don't agree on this, we don't agree on that, but we do agree on this. It's not trying to pull one side to the other to convert people, but no, we can find common ground. I refer to Braver Angels as the secular version of the Anglican community movement, the Anglican movement. We were created 500 years ago in tension between Protestant and Catholic, and we found a third way, the via media, the way in between, which has been the hallmark of who we are as Episcopalians ever since. We were created in tension, and we can live in tension, and Braver Angels speaks to that tension. And that tension is rising, the fear level is increasing, and as a result, we have created another initiative called With Malice Towards None, drawing on Lincoln's second inaugural address, With Malice Towards None, But Charity Toward All. Lincoln offered that just at the end of the Civil War when tension was still so high in the country, deeply divided. With Malice Towards None is working with religious communities, with universities and colleges and civic groups from across the country. Former members of Congress are involved. More and more press is taking hold of this message of this movement and, and speaking to it and inviting people to be a part of these conversations. To offer, offer events called Hold America Together Should There Be conflict after election day and before we know the results of the election. That could be a week, that could be 10 days, God knows it could be longer than that. And if it's longer, the acrimony will increase. Threats of violence, which are already there and more people than not, are thinking that is going to be the outcome. We are organizing op opportunities for religious groups colleges, universities, and civic organizations to gather together, to hold America together, to hold America together, and to engage in religious rituals that which will speak to our desire, our desire for healing. We're not able to do it in person, but every week, every week in the Eucharist, just before we move to the, to the Holy Communion, the priest says, the peace of the Lord be always with you. In my 41 years of ordained life, that has become a celebration of community. But before that and beneath that, it was an act of reconciliation. When Jesus said to his disciples in the fifth chapter of Matthew's gospel, if you're bringing a gift to the altar, first put it down and make peace. Be reconciled to your brother or sister and then bring your gift to the altar. It is making a statement to the religious community and to the world that whatever separates us, whatever divides us, can be brought together in the reconciling love of Jesus Christ. And we need that witness more than any time that I can remember in my life. As part of With Malice Towards None, we've, we've uh, put forth a pledge that we're asking people to sign and to at least take hold of. Let me read the pledge. Regardless of how the election turns out, I will not hold hate, disdain, or ridicule for those who voted differently from me. Whether I am pleased or upset about the outcome, I will seek to understand the concerns and aspirations of those who voted differently and will look for opportunities to work with people with whom I disagree. Now it may be that immediately after the election, we may have reactive feelings of disdain, ridicule, maybe even hate. They just burst forth. We may not want to have them, but there they are. But what the pledge says, I will not hold on to them. I will not hold on to them. I will let them go do whatever I can to hold America together, to build relationships, to depolarize. It's an incredibly important and compelling pledge and I invite you to consider it, 
to go on to braverangels.com and dot org, braverangels.org and see the pledge. Again, there are forces and voices out there that will want us to give in to ridicule or disdain or even hate. And if you don't know what those feelings are, just spend five minutes on Facebook and you'll find out. We can't do that. As Christians, we can't do that. We are commanded to love one another, even when, no, especially when we don't want to. This coming Saturday is Halloween, but this year, not really. COVID will keep people in, will confine kids to very safe places, probably not walking through neighborhoods. I know Worcester has issued the, the no Halloween procession rule. But it's important, I think, when we think about Halloween to outline its history and its, and its historical connection to the Celtic celebration of Samhain, spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. So when occurred on the night before the first day of winter. First day of winter then was November 1st. And it was believed by the Celts that the souls of those who died in the last year would rise up from their graves and make their journey to the other world. And so people lit candles to guide them on their way to their final destination. And because the weather was cold, these ghosts and these goblins wanted to get in out of the cold. And so people offered them candy or, or, or treats to distract them and to keep them on their journey. And if no treats were offered, well, the ghosts or the goblins will take up residence and no end of tricks would be played. Today, our kids don't necessarily dress up as ghosts and goblins, although some do. There are far more Power Rangers and Elsas and Princesses and PJ Masks than, than, uh, than images of dead, dead ghosts. But they recreate that ancient holiday. Now, they won't be coming this year. They won't be coming this year, but <laughs> something may be knocking on your door. If not the front door to your house, then the front door to your soul. It will be hate or it will be ridicule or it will be disdain. And you'll be inclined to respond to it. So I invite you to give that that force, that dark force, something to move it on its way. It's hard to say no to it because it's very powerful, but you can distract it. To offer it a little bit of love, some, some candy of love, figure out what that might be for you and send it on its way. Because if we let it in to our souls and our households, that hate plays tricks in ways that we can't begin to imagine. That darkness can take root in your kitchen or your bedroom or in your soul. Move it on. Don't let it in. Have a supply of psychic candy ready to give out. We need to remember Dr. Martin Luther King's admonition. Darkness cannot cast out darkness. Only light can do that. Just as hatred cannot cast out hatred, only love can do that. My brothers and sisters, we need, we must be bearers of love, even when, especially when we don't want to be. We need one another to support us in this journey, in this journey of love and hope and healing and courage. We are the bearers of Christ's message. May it be so.